Welcome to Horizons of Thought. Today, I'm going to do episode two on fallacies. The first fallacy that I want to talk about is the gambler's fallacy. And this is the idea that runs can occur in statistically independent phenomena, such as coin tosses. If I take a coin and I toss it 500 times and I get 500 heads, that's a really uncommon occurrence. But it's no more uncommon than any of the other possible combinations of that coin toss. And on top of that, if I take that coin and flip it again, I still only have a 50-50 chance of getting heads. The odds are not higher because I had a run. They're not lower because I had a run. They're the same. Second, the black and white or the false dilemma fallacy. How often have we heard somebody say, I think we should have a little social assistance for poor people in this neighborhood. And the response is, you pinko commie scum. Or how often have you heard somebody argue, I really like science fiction from the 1950s, and somebody responds, you're a racist and a sexist. I'm like, I think there's a lot of space in between the response. There's a lot of space. Not everything in this world is black and white. Look, there are some things that are black and white that are binary. We program our computers to have little switches that do zeros and ones because we need them to be binary. We need them to be one thing or the other. We make them this way on purpose. There are all sorts of chemical reactions and other things that are going to work one way or the other in this world. It's not that it's impossible for there to be black and white reasoning. It's not that it's impossible for there to be an absolute good and an absolute evil. It's just that most of the time when you're making an argument, you cannot assume that there's your argument and the other argument and no other arguments in between. That is a very, very serious mistake to make in argumentation. The third one that I want to talk about is begging the question, and I'll get to a fourth one that's related to this. And that is the idea a circular argument or begging the question is one in which the conclusion is embedded in the premise. If you make an argument where you've already assumed the answer in the question you're asking, that's what you're doing with begging the question. Now, let me give you an example of something that's closely related called a complex question. And that one goes like this. Hey, Johnny, are you still cheating at cards? It assumes that Johnny used to cheat at cards. The only options you've given Johnny in this case is no, I don't still cheat at cards, or yes, I still cheat at cards. But what you have not done with this particular argument is give Johnny the space to say, no, I never cheated at cards. Because the question assumes part of the answer in its structure. This kind of argumentation is not particularly useful and is another one of the fallacies. You know what? As a special, I'm going to give you a fourth one right now. This is the bandwagon fallacy. And I'm going to tell you both sides of this one really importantly. One is a bit of a self-aggrandizing story. When I was a child, we played in gym a version of Simon Says, where the teacher teaches us a bunch of motions and activities to do. She gives them all a name and then says, now I'm going to physically do the wrong thing and I'm going to call out the name association. And I want all of you to decide what it is that you're going to do. And the people who get it wrong and don't follow the words that I told them to do are going to be thrown out of the game until we have only one person left. I was a deeply unpopular child, as I admitted in a previous episode on this. And at one point, the teacher told us to do something, which I know meant run to the far wall. And all the other kids were standing around confused, and I ran to the far, far wall. They didn't like me, so they didn't follow me. There was this one cool kid who did something else. All the other children followed him. And right at the beginning of the game, I was the only winner, and everyone else had lost the game because I had remembered what it was that we were told to do in that circumstance. I did not follow the bandwagon. In fact, I'd ignored it, didn't even care what the cool kid had to do. Everybody else followed the bandwagon and they came to the wrong conclusion of what it was to do. It was a very happy moment in my grade one heart. 
I was extremely happy to see that I could be right when everyone else was wrong. Having said that, there have definitely been times in my life where it went the other way. I remember taking the wrong lessons from this. Grade 11, model parliament, a person puts together a proposal. I was on one side. Uh, they were an independent proposal they were putting together for changing um, the Youth Criminal Code in Canada. It was a really badly designed argument, but I did not like the way my side was being abusive to the person. So I stood with them and then they laughed and said, no, my argument sucks. This bill needs to fail right out loud in front of everybody. Extremely embarrassing for me. This is important. The bandwagon argument problem is a problem when you believe that because everybody else thinks something, it's right. But it doesn't mean that because everybody else thinks something, the argument's wrong. The bandwagon is independent of the validity of the point that's being made. It exists whether everyone's actually right about the point or nobody's right about the point. That's the problem with the bandwagon. It does not inform on the argument by itself. You need a different kind of evidence. And if you're just using the, well, everybody's doing this argument, you're making a fallacy in argumentation. It doesn't mean that the conclusion you made is wrong. It doesn't mean that the conclusion you made is right. It means that the process you use to get there is not useful. So there we have four more of the fallacies. Thank you for watching Horizons of Thought. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please click the like button. If you didn't, please click the dislike button. Either way, put in some comments. Let me know what you think. Let me know what more fallacies you want me to talk about. Let me know if you want a more detailed explanation of what fallacies are. You name it, I'll try to work on the topic. If you really like this channel and want to support it, go down to the donor box below, click the button, and subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much. Have a good day, and I hope to see you in about a week.